We've implemented and tested our input, so let's move on to submitting the form and storing the text from the input as a new to-do. We'll start by adding a new context in our existing describe. Context, like describe, is just a way for us to group and organize our test. Here, we'll group our form submission tests together. In the new context, we'll add a new it and throw an only on it so we can work with this test by itself. And we'll test that our form adds a new to-do when submitted. To do that, we'll use get to access the input form using its CSS class, type our to-do text using the type command, and we can also use the type command to press the enter key by passing in enter wrapped in curly brackets. When our test runs, we'll see our visit, get, and type commands, as well as some additional entries in the command log. These new entries are page events. Cypress logs out important events for us so we can better track what's happening in our application during a test run. Here, we can see that there was a form submission, as well as a page load and a URL change. We expected the form submission, but the page load and the new URL may seem a little surprising. What's happening here is that since we don't have anything in place to handle this form submission, we're seeing the default form behavior. It's trying to submit via HTTP GET, so the form is causing the page to reload, and the URL has changed because it added a question mark to the URL. Let's update our application code to prevent this default behavior. We need a function to make an API call when our form is submitted. Let's create that in the service.js file under the lib directory. We'll start by importing the Axios library that we've installed as a dependency. Then we'll create and export a new function called save to do. Save to do will take a to do object as an argument, and we'll use the post method provided by Axios to make a post request to our API, which will be located at http localhost 3030 slash API slash to do's. And we'll pass in our to do argument as the post body. Since we're using an arrow function, we'll get an implicit return of the promise returned by Axios. Back in the to do app component, we'll import our save to do function, and then we can add a submit handler method on the component. We'll take the passed in event argument and call prevent default on it to avoid the form attempting to submit via get request again. Then we'll create a new to do object using the current to do value for the name property and giving it a default value of false for the is complete field. Now we can call the save to do function, passing in the new to do object, and we'll handle the promise resolution with a then. Axios will give us the API response body and a property called data, so I'll destructure the response to pull out that data property. The response body in this case will be our newly created to do object complete with the ID that gets assigned on the server. We'll add it to our state by calling setState and calling concat on the existing to-dos array with our new to-do. We'll take care of our this binding in the constructor just like we did with our change handler. And then we can pass the submit handler down to the to-do form component. Back in our to-do form component, we can add the handler to the form using the onSubmit property. We'll save our file and back in the test runner, we can run our test again. This time, we don't get the page events we got before. We've hijacked the form submission and prevented any default behavior, so we'll no longer see those. What we got instead is a page event for an XHR call. This is because we're making that API call with our save to do function. This XHR call is resulting in a 404. In our case, the 404 is expected because we don't have our API enabled yet. If this were unexpected, we could pin this event by clicking on it and open Chrome's DevTools to get more information about the event. Here, we can verify the method, URL, status, and could also drill into the request and response objects if we needed to. Our application is getting a 404 because we don't have an API available yet. With Cypress, we have the tools we need to stub our API calls. This means we'll define our own predefined responses for these API calls. This allows us to do a few things. One, it lets us build our front end even if the back end is still being built. Two, it allows us to test application behavior with known data meaning we don't have to worry about our test being flaky as a result of external data or unreliable network conditions. And three, this will give us full control, making it easy to test scenarios that would traditionally be very difficult to recreate. Let's take a look at this in action. Back in our code, we'll start by adding a call to sci.server at the top of our test. This will start a server that allows us to stub our responses. Now we can add sci.route. We'll use the route command to define the request we want to handle. In this case, it'll be a post to API slash to do's, and we'll supply it with a predefined response we want our application to receive when it makes this API call. Let's save this and see what happens when the test runs again. This time, the page event for the XHR call indicates that it has been stubbed. Even though we don't have an available endpoint, our application is receiving a 200 response for this request in our test. Looking at the application preview, we can tell there are some issues with our output. The new to do that we added should say buy eggs, but here it's empty.
The input form is still showing our input, and once we've successfully added our to-do, we should clear out the input to allow for more to be added. Let's create some tests for this expected behavior. Before we jump back into the code, let's grab some information from our UI to make writing the rest of our test easier. I'll right-click on the to-do item that was added to the list and choose Inspect from the menu. We'll see that we can identify the list of to-dos with the class to-do list. Back in the test code, I'll add another sci.get, passing in the to-do list class and li to get the child list item elements. We want to assert that after submitting the form, we have one item in the list. We'll add another assertion by chaining an and to the should. And is just an alias for should. It does exactly the same thing, but it makes our test read more like a sentence than if we used a second should. In the end, we'll confirm that the list contains the name of the to-do we just submitted. We're using this same string in three places. Let's move it into a constant to avoid inconsistencies in our test. I'll move by eggs into a constant called item text and replace all three occurrences with a reference to that constant. Now that our test is in better shape, let's save it and run it. We'll see that our assertion on the list length passes, but the list doesn't contain the expected text. Let's update our app code so this works as expected. Back in our editor, we'll open up the to-do list component. We're mapping over the to-dos, but we're not passing in any to-do data. We'll start by passing in a key property, using the to-do items ID property for that. Then we'll spread the to-do object into the to-do item, so it will receive each property of the to-do on props. Now we can update the to-do item and replace the empty string with props.name. We'll save it and run our test again, now the list is updated as expected. Our input still isn't being cleared out. Let's update our test to account for this expectation. I'll add a should to the chain that starts with getting the input field. We want to make an assertion about the input, so we want to make sure we put the assertion where the input is the current subject. We'll assert that the input should have a value of an empty string. Let's also update our code to clear the input after a successful submission. In the to-do app component, we'll set the value of current to-do to an empty string and our existing call to set state. With that done, we can save our updates and run our updated test. We can see that the to-do has been added to the list and the input has been cleared and as expected, all of our assertions are passing. Let's write another test. We can remove the only from our previous test and right after that test, we'll start a new one with an it, adding only to this one. Here, we'll test that an error message is displayed on a failed submission. We'll be stubbing our API call again, so we'll start with a sci.server, and we'll define a new sci.route. This time, we'll define our route by passing in an options object as the only argument. In this options argument, we'll define the URL, the method, and we'll define a status code of 500 to simulate our failed call. We'll also supply an empty object for the response body. With our route defined, let's attempt to submit the form. We'll get the input, and using the type command, we'll enter a string test, and in that same string, We'll tell type to hit the enter key as well. Now we need to make some assertions. I'll get the list items, and since this request is going to fail, we want to ensure that our app doesn't add anything to the list. We'll do this by asserting that the list items we've requested don't exist. We also want to make sure an error is displayed. For that, we'll get an element with the class error and assert that it should be visible. When we save this, our test will run, and we'll see that our first assertion passed, but Cypress times out trying to find the error element. Nothing is being added to the list because the failed response means our promise is rejected rather than resolved and the underlying set state logic never runs. The error element isn't found because we haven't rendered it yet. Back in the to-do app component, we'll update the submit handler to deal with a rejected promise. We'll add a catch after our then. We'll keep it simple and just show a generic error message. So we won't worry about any arguments and we'll just set a value on state called error and we'll set that to be true. Down in the render method, just below our to-do's heading, let's conditionally render an error message based on state.error. If it's true, we'll show a span with the error class, otherwise we'll just render null in its place. When we run the test again, we'll see everything pass and our error message is displayed in the application preview. Back in our test code, let's remove the only from this test and do a little refactoring. Each of these tests made a call to sci.server. So let's add a before each at the top of our context. We'll put a call to sci.server in the before each, and then we can delete it from the individual tests. Saving will run all of the tests in this file, and we can see that everything continues to work even after our refactor. We've tested and implemented code to handle both a successful and an unsuccessful API call. 
Because we stubbed our API calls, we were able to do this in a repeatable way. And as an added benefit, we were able to implement the front end part of this without having an actual API available. Knowing the endpoints and the expected input and output for the call were all we needed to stub that functionality and implement features without being held up by that dependency.